بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الخلق وأشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الله سبحانه وتعالى says in the forty third ayah of سورة الأنعام فلولا إذ جاءهم بأسنا تضرعوا ولكن قست قلوبهم وزين لهم الشيطان ما كانوا يعملون If only when our calamity, our disaster came to them, they humbled themselves. But instead, their hearts became harsh and the shaytan made alluring for them their deeds. In the current climate, Perhaps there is no better time to can contemplate and reflect over our own shortcomings and weaknesses as individuals as well as an overall humanity. It is the case that when such a novel nazila, a new event, comes down and afflicts humanity in such a way, there are preceding acts that brought it about. In other words, there's an intimate relationship between the deeds of humanity and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends in return. This is not to say that what is currently taking place is a punishment for every single human being. Uh, rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a latif. For every single person, the way that we are afflicted with the current pandemic is different. For some it is an elevation, for others it is a trial, for others it is a wake-up call. And for some it is certainly a punishment. If we are to look at the following ayah, it makes things even more frightening. And this is an example of tarheeb in the Qur'an. Allah draws us close to him through Targhib, that he entices us with his mercy and his uh, blessings that he has prepared for the believers at paradise. But also he admonishes us and he reminds us of his majesty and his power and the potential for us bringing down his wrath. That when it was the case that humanity was or a particular nation was unable to reflect over what its own hands has put forth, Allah did not just send down punishment from the heavens straight away. Rather, He allowed them to increase in their affluence, in their luxury. And due to them seeing this and being overly pleased with this, it was through that that their destruction was brought about. وَلَيَذُ بِاللَّهِ فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ حَتَّى إِذَا فَرِحُوا بِمَا أُوتُوا أَخَذْنَاهُمْ بَغْتَةً فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْلِسُونَ That when they forgot what they were reminded of فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ We open for them the doors of everything until they were happy, حتى إذا فرحوا بما أوتوا. They were happy with what they were given. They were taken abruptly. أخذناهم بغتة فإذا هم مبلسون. And they were destroyed. It is not the case that apparent affluence, apparent luxury, is a sign of Allah's pleasure. More often than not, it is in fact istidraj, Allah leading one slowly towards one's own destruction. May Allah save us all. And in fact, if we look at the sunnah of Allah and His creation and past nations, this is what usually happens. Nations end up destroying their own selves through the blind abundance, the hedonism which they practice essentially the end game of abundance is chaos may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us wisdom to reflect over our own doings and perhaps learn from our mistakes 
والله أعلم وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته